Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry guys, my name is Sihes Kosana and this is Close Up Education. You should already know by now that you should be calling me Usem Numzan. It is not debatable. Alright, I'm so happy to be seeing new faces and if you are not a new face trying to rewrite that metric, yes, this is the page for you. Rewrite that metric at the best way you can. We have to pass that class. All Today right. we'll be speaking more about synoptic weather map interpretation how to understand or also interpret a synoptic weather map a synoptic weather map consists of pressure cells pressure cells are also used to show weather patterns of a particular place so we have two pressure cells right pressure cells we have a high pressure cell and a low pressure cell right these pressure cells have lines that join places of equal atmospheric pressure. Those lines are called isopars. These are the lines that join places of equal atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric intervals or numbers that are written within the isopar. So in a low pressure, those numbers or the atmospheric pressure reading decreases towards the center. So if this last isopar was 1004, the second one will be 1002, and the last one will be 1000. The atmospheric pressure reading decreases towards the center on a low pressure cell. What about high pressure cells? The high pressure cells, they also have isopars, right? But then in a high pressure, the atmospheric pressure or the atmospheric reading increases towards the center. So if here it is 1018, here it's going to be 1020, and here it's going to be 1022. It increases towards the center, while on a low pressure, it decreases towards the center. All right, now let's recap. We know one thing. These are isopars, right? Number two, these are atmospheric pressures, which are measured using hectopascals, right? They are measured using hectopascals. We know that high pressure is associated with winter, right? Therefore, meaning low pressure has to be associated with some. Okay, so now we understand these are the pressure cells you will find on your synoptic weather map. They have isopars, which are lines that join places of equal atmospheric pressure, which are measured using hectopascals, right? Now we have to understand more of how this data is collected. This data is usually collected through satellites. It can also be weather balloons and it can also be drones. So these are the equipment or systems that are used to collect data for the synoptic weather map to identify the weather patterns and also the weather conditions. All right, we don't only use pressure cells to interpret synoptic weather map. We also use weather station model. And stay tuned, subscribe to continue the lesson. Okay. We are back to understand what we call the weather station. The weather station model. The weather station model consists of a second like shape that will interpret what we call the cloud cover of that particular area. What we call the cloud cover. So this circle tells us, is that place clear? Does it have clear skies or is it overcast? Whereby every single part of the circle has a black marking or whatever. So now we'll be, for our cloud cover, we'll be using a, a cloud right we'll be using a cloudy cloud cover this is how a cloud cloud cover looks like it is three over four right it is cloudy and when it's cloudy they are obviously high temperatures and what will the high temperature look like it is 28 degrees 
this is where a temperature has to stay on the weather station model then under the temperature we have the precipitation is there rain at that particular area or is it there wind or is there a uh, snow or is there hailstorm or are there thunderstorm but then because of it's very partly cloudy or cloudy will be using what we call precipitation sign the preci the rain sign this dot here represents rain meaning go to this area it is raining currently right under the rain symbol we have a dew point temperature dew point temperature is usually not that far from the temperature so we have our 25 degrees celsius under the precipitation all right we are not yet done drawing our weather station model the weather station model also has a line right this line represents the wind direction let's write it down the wind direction in order to understand any directions you will have to always remember what i'm about to tell you this is what my minion used to tell me he used to draw a cross first and said never eat sour worms never eat sour worms you will never ever get your directions wrong never eat sour worms all right which direction is this wind taking obviously eastwards so this is eastwards eastwards okay right and we know this is what we call rain okay then we continue at the last part of our wind direction line we usually have our wind speed that line represents the wind speed how fast is the wind moving wind speed okay so this is how a wind speed looks like if there is a line at the end of the wind direction line that means this is 10 knots right this is 10 knots this is how you write your knots okay but then if we have another small line here this will represent five so this will mean this is now 15 knots the speed the wind speed of that particular area so now it's what it's 15 but then if i have two long lines on that wind direction line that will obviously mean 20 now it is 20 but then if i remove the last line and a half the second line this will mean five knots so we have 20 knots 15 knots 10 knots and five knots this is how you interpret your weather station model right yes this is how we start our year and be sure to like because of we are coming very very strong okay